explain to me how how in the hell did you get linked up with one championship? Because so, you were such before you answer, because you were you know, you were such kind of the poster boy for the UFC, because when you think about it, the UFC and just mixed martial arts in general had kind of this, you know, storyline about, you know, rugged, dumb guys, you know, meatheads. And then you were a former math teacher. What, what grade did you teach? Uh, high school. High school. So Freshman uh, to, to, to seniors. So, yeah. you know, you're an educated dude. You're hopefully good at math, you yeah. know, and you're, you know, you're a math teacher that decided to, you know, fight grown men in your underwear in a steel cage. So I think at we that time... We all make time, good life choices. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I think at that time, it, like, kind of portrayed the the mixed martial arts, especially the UFC, in a different light where people are like, oh, these guys aren't just... These are real athletes. Like, no, they have other options. No, if you, if you actually... I mean, people forget even 10, 12 years ago. Like, I, I was just recently watching a, a video where I was in Germany promoting... At, the, at that point in time. And the kind of questions that we were getting asked, like, so wait a minute, you can actually choke people? And this was in like 2009, right? Now, it's just when you, that long ago. Yeah, it's not. And so people forget that that was the state of MMA back when I was champion. Like we were you know, still being compared to human cockfighting and explaining the fact that these fights could go to the ground. And you, yes. the thought of, you know, in the Western mentality, the thought of being able to hit somebody when they're down. Every film you've ever seen is like, somebody gets knocked down, uh, like a cowboy movie, it's like, well, get up, yeah, get them right? Up, yeah. And so that, we, you know, we had to get that past that entire stigma. And I was exactly what we needed here in the States at that time because we were, fought, we were fighting to get past that, in essence. Agree. And so what, coming full circle at the end of my career, like towards the end of my career, I went down to Singapore to teach a seminar um, at Evolve. And just randomly got hired to go down there and teach? No, the, the, I mean, they, reached, they, they reached out to me. And yeah. uh, actually, I went down there with Hume. The oh, two nice. of us, yeah, the two of us went down there to, uh, to teach seminar. I was still competing at the time. But, oh, real um, quick, for those that don't know, Matt Hume is uh, DJ, uh, Demetrius Johnson's coach, and he's also involved with one championship. Matt was my coach at yeah. one point in time so, as well. And so. Matt's like, you know, yeah. he's the Phil Jackson of <coughs> MMA coaches. Dude, yeah. He's <laughs> mastermind. That's why they, the call nice him, guy. they call him the wizard. They call him the wizard? Exactly. That makes sense. He's the nicest guy ever until you he's grapple so cool. with him. Have you ever grappled with him? No. Oh, God. It's like grappling a wet blanket. It's really? Terrible. Oh. I didn't know. I'll, I'll, tell you, I, I'll tell you a story about that after this, but but we I went down there to teach a seminar, met some, some of the executives uh, at one championship, and they they were like, hey, if you would ever be interested in a position when you're done, retired from fighting, l let us know. And, and did you want to do, do, like, you know, certain guys get done with fighting and they're like, I'm good, man. Like, is, did you see this, like, uh, as a career choice? Um, I, n not initially, because yeah. I, I was still in competition at the time. And even when, when I retired at first, there was this transition. I can remember, distinctly remember, after I took the job with one, sitting in the stadium. Uh, for the first probably year, year and a half of events. And the whole time I was sitting there, I hated it because uncomfortable. I had the same feelings that I had as if I was sitting in the locker room. It's triggering. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. It, and it really took me some some time to actually escape that, to, to be able to sit and, and, and watch the matches. It kind of change your, yeah. your, the way your brain works. I, 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 to this day, it's tough for me to go to fights. Yeah. Yeah, I get yeah. PTSD. It's triggering. But yeah. with that being said, I've done so many different things for, for one championship. I, I ran, um, I did a travel show called One Warrior Series. It's called Rich Franklin's One Warrior Series, where I traveled around, recruited talent with a production crew, and, you know, we, we told the stories, like, whether it was, like, something cultural or whatever we got into. And, and you know, I, I initially helped set up, like, the merchandise department for one, and just did several different things like and jack so I, of all trades. I don't know if I'm a jack of all trades, yeah. but I'm kind of just slotted in where where they're lacking real talent. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll try to say it that way. Yeah, 